the headlines of BTV News. Prime Minister meets with representatives of Japan Vietnam Economic Committee. National Assembly Standing Committee holds first conference to assess quality of National Assembly deputies activities. And later on in our world news, U.S. outlines priorities to reopen Baltimore port. Broadcasting from Hanoi, the capital of Vietnam, VTV News starts right now. Hello there and welcome to VTV News broadcast live to you from Hanoi. You're with me, Lina Phạm, and here's the top news of the hour. Prime Minister Phạm Minh Ching received Fujimoto Masayoshi and Hiodo Masayuki, Chairman of the Japan-Vietnam Economic Committee of the Japan Business Federation, or Keidan Ren, along with leaders of several leading Japanese corporations on Thursday. The meeting aimed to facilitate the implementation of the new comprehensive strategic partnership between Vietnam and Japan. The chairman of the Japan-Vietnam Economic Committee and many leaders of Japanese corporations expressed their delight at the elevation of bilateral relations following the establishment of the Comprehensive Strategic Partnership for Peace and Prosperity in Asia and the world. They hailed Vietnam's stable political and social conditions, abundant labor resources, a large market of over 100 million people, and a steadily developing economy with an improving investment environment. The country, thus, is the second most attractive investment destination for Japanese businesses, according to Japan Bank for International Cooperation's latest survey. Attending Japanese enterprises made several proposals to the government and relevant ministries to facilitate investment and business operations. Prime Minister Pham Min Chin praised the cooperation and valuable contributions of the Japan Business Federation, Kedanran in promoting strong development relations between the two countries across all sectors. He took the opportunity to inform investors about Vietnam's significant achievements over the past 40 years of renovation under the leadership of the Communist Party of Vietnam. The Prime Minister proposed K. Danren continue to enhance economic connectivity between the two countries, expand cooperation in priority areas within the framework of the Comprehensive Strategic Partnership. He affirmed that the Vietnamese government will continue to accompany and support investors in the spirit of harmonious interests, shared risks for mutual benefits and development. Vietnam will continue building a fair, transparent, and equal business environment, maintain political stability, social order, macroeconomic stability, inflation control, and ensure major economic balances. Investors can feel assured that the country will create stable conditions for investors' long-term operations. On the same day, Prime Minister Phạm Minh Ching received a World Bank Country Director for Vietnam, Caroline Turk, who came to bid farewell at the end of her tenure. He thanked and appreciated the support and cooperation of the Country Director in particular and the World Bank in general in recent times. In the coming time, he proposed that the two sides coordinate closely to speed up the progress of existing projects and find solutions to remove obstacles. The Prime Minister also asked the World Bank to deploy a new generation of loans that are larger and more effective, focusing on strategic and large-scale projects with pervasive impacts and mobilize other capital sources for projects in the fields of energy, digital transformation, green transition, smart agriculture, low-carbon emissions, climate change response, expressway and urban railway. The World Bank director thanked for the support of the government, the prime minister, ministries, branches and localities of Vietnam. She emphasized that no matter what position she is in, she will always accompany with Vietnam. The National Assembly Standing Committee on Thursday afternoon held a conference to review the activities of the National Assembly deputies in all provinces and cities in 2023 and to deploy tax for 2024. The meeting was chaired by National Assembly Chairman Vương Đình Huệ. This is the first time such a conference has been held. This is a new feature in the National Assembly's efforts, aiming to complete larger volume of work and gain a distinctive achievement every year. 
In 2023, the National Assembly held the most meeting sessions ever, with five to review and timely respond to 84 major issues. This is also the foundation for the spread of innovation spirit among National Assembly deputies. The implementation of legislative plans, programs, and resolutions has been professionally organized. Since the beginning of the term, we have held many specialized conferences and activities for the National Assembly. At the end of each session, National Assembly delegations always actively organize meetings like this for the National Assembly to evaluate the results of the session. This is crucial as it helps the National Assembly learn from the existing limitations and actively innovate in preparing for the next session. The National Assembly Chair praised the achievements of the National Assembly delegations from provinces and cities over the past time, while pointing out that further efforts should be exerted to improve the quality of the National Assembly deputies and their activities. National Assembly proposed that all officials continue to closely coordinate with the Fatherland Front under the guidance of the party committees to further promote the engagement of deputies with voters. Currently, there are regulations on how National Assembly deputies engage with voters according to the program of the National Assembly, but there are no regulations on independently engagement. It is necessary to study and complete regulations on voter engagement so it is not restricted to only the National Assembly's agenda. Also on Thursday afternoon, the launch ceremony for the competition commemorating the 80th anniversary of the National Assembly's first general election took place. In the campaign launch, Vice Permanent Chair of the National Assembly requested that all delegates and individuals participating must set an example with pioneering spirit, firm political courage, contribute insights and value to the National Assembly, and strive to fulfill their functions and tasks, worthy of the trust of voters and the people. Politburo member Chung Thi Mai, permanent member of the party Central Committee Secretariat and head of the party Central Committee's Organization Commission, held a working session with the Diet Bien Provincial Standing Party Committee on the preparation for the 70th anniversary of the Diet Bien Phu victory on Thursday. At the meeting, she emphasized that the remaining preparation workload is great. She requested relevant agencies to develop a detailed plan for the anniversary. She stressed the need to highlight the meaning, stature, and a great historical value of the victory and affirm the leadership of the party, President Ho Chi Minh, the spirit of great national solidarity, the patriotism and determination of people. Earlier, she visited and presented gifts to 20 soldiers in the province. She also offered incense to pay tribute to heroic martyrs at the Martyrs Temple at Diet Bien Phu Battlefield and National Martyrs Cemetery A1. Vietnam consistently implements a foreign policy of independence, self-reliance, peace, friendship, cooperation, and development, as well as multilateralization and diversification of foreign relations and deep international integration. Foreign Minister Bui Thanh Sơn affirmed this in his speech at the Brookings Institution in Washington, D.C. on March the 26th local time. He said that Vietnam will continue with its bamboo diplomacy strategy to respond to challenges and maintain a favorable foreign environment for national development. Receiving several advisors and assistance of the U.S. Congress, he proposed the U.S. Congress to maintain support for bilateral cooperation in various fields, including overcoming the consequences of war, economics, trade, education and training, science, technology, security, defense, and people-to-people -people exchanges. Coming up next, Ministry of Trade seeks appropriate implementation of trade defense tax in steel industry. And boarding school becomes second home for ethnic children in Hua Bing province.
Welcome back to VTV News. Vietnam plans to apply trade defense measures or anti-dumping duties on imported goods to protect the domestic manufacturing sector in case of unfair competition. However, the implementation of these measures needs to be seriously considered too for sustainable application in individual cases. For instance, domestic production of steel only meets about 30% of the demand, while the remaining 70% is imported. Faced with proposals to impose anti-dumping duties on imported steel materials, the Ministry of Industry and Trade and relevant agencies are carefully studying the negative impacts of the measures on this industry. The company has to spend 20 million dong to purchase each ton of finished rolled steel. This price has been stable for the past year. However, the company is concerned that production costs will soar if hot rolled steel imports are subjected to trade defense taxes. We assume that applying a protective tax of 10 percent, for example, would lead to a 7 percent increase in the selling price of our output to customers. This significantly affects the contracts we have already signed. According to a report by the Vietnam Steel Association, Vietnam needs about 11 million tons of hot rolled steel annually to meet its production needs. However, over 7 million tons of this material needs to be imported each year. Therefore, imposing trade defense taxes could jeopardize the steel industry's production and export competitiveness. Our export products will face double anti-dumping duties, one in Vietnam on raw materials and another in the exporting country on the finished product. Consequently, our finished products cannot compete with those of other countries. Regarding this matter, a representative from the Ministry of Industry and Trade stated that assessment and initiation of investigations must be carried out within a year before reporting to the ministry's board for a decision on whether to investigate the case. The Trade Remedies Authority will conduct assessments and gather complete data as required by the WTO and foreign trade management laws. We must fully comply with these issues during the investigation process. Excessive use of these measures can drive up domestic prices and the selling prices of domestic products. Therefore, the government also needs to exert pressure on companies in this industry to improve technological capabilities, reduce production costs, According to the Trade Remedies Authority, steel is one of the most frequently targeted products of trade defense measures worldwide. Seven out of 670 cases are in Vietnam alone. However, the imposition of trade defense measures is only considered when harm is detected in the domestic steel industry. In the first two months of the year, lobster exports increased 18 times compared to the same period last year, netting nearly 30 million U.S. dollars. This data was recently released by the Vietnam Association of Seafood Exporters and Producers of ASEP. Despite facing many difficulties last year, lobster exports have shown a significant recovery. Many are wondering if this recovery momentum will continue in the coming months. There are two types of lobsters raised in the waters of the South Central Provinces, blue lobster and cotton lobster. Since the middle of last year, cotton lobsters have been deadlocked, after China included cotton lobsters in the list of endangered wildlife species that need protection. For blue lobster, export is still favorable. The type of blue lobster accounts for 75% of lobster production of about 4,000 tons per year in the South Central Provinces. The demand for blue lobster is high, customers are buying a lot. Problems in importing cotton lobster have been received and handled by China. It is expected that Vietnam's cotton lobster exports to the Chinese market will be considered under a special mechanism. While waiting for the opening of the cotton lobster export market, the South Central Provinces have begun to adjusting production outputs to adapt the market. The local farmers are closely following the market and gradually reducing the production of cotton lobsters to avoid damage to production when it cannot be exported. The market needs blue lobster, why not raise blue lobster for sale? The second, I think, the export floor must aim for sustainability and through official channels. Lobster farming is an important livelihood for the people of the South Central Provinces. Experience and techniques of lobster farming are available. Strictly following the market development is important to keep the recovery of lobster exports. 
According to Barrio Vungtau province plan for 2021 to 2030 with a vision towards 2050, the province will continue to develop additional industrial parks and promote green industry, which can deeply integrate into global value chains. This serves as a foundation for Barrio Vungtau to develop a sustainable economy. In pursuit of a green industry, the Standing Committee of Bari Avunto Provincial Party Committee issued Directive 43. This clearly regulates eight types of projects that are not suitable for investment or should limit investment attraction. The province's direction is to focus on sustainable development, so we have chosen environmentally friendly projects, ensuring new, modern, and labor-intensive technology right from the start. From now until 2030, Barrio Avungto province plans to establish high-tech and eco-industrial parks. In conjunction with urban areas, this will form expensive industrial service urban complexes. By 2030, the province aims to have 24 industrial parks with a total plant land area exceeding 16,000 hectares. Infrastructure development investors will optimize the efficiency of their businesses' infrastructure provision services. As for businesses in the industrial park, participating in the project will increase the added value and competitiveness of their business in the production process. The goal and vision of this specialized industrial park is to become a large-scale, modern industrial park and the most optimal investment location in Vietnam for investors. It aims to attract high-quality, large-scale foreign direct investment from abroad. Focusing on the development of smart industrial parks, Barrio Vungto aims to create a powerful push for sustainable industrial development. The goal is to increase the number of projects that incorporate modern production environmental protection practices to between 50 and 100 percent by 2030. More than 800 policies of beneficiaries and families in difficult circumstances in An Hoa Hai Commune of Tuy An District and Hoa Hội Commune of Phu Hoa District Phu Yên Province were given free health examinations and medicine on Thursday and Friday. The doctors and nurses brought also utilized x-rays, ultrasound machines and electrocardiogram for general medic medical examination. They also provided consultation for people to prevent common diseases and give medical treatment to people. The program aims to help detect diseases and potential diseases to get timely treatment to the population. After more than 20 years of operation, Gafong Boarding Secondary and High School for Ethnic Students became a bright spot in the education and training sector of Hua Bing Province. A national standard school, this educational institution serves as ethnic children's second home as it provides students with basic training of education and life, as well as a safe and enjoyable place to grow up. These students are taking an extra class after regular hours, as they prepare for the National High School Examination 2025, which is scheduled to take place in a new format. To consolidate students' knowledge before exam season, the school has offered extra classes every day. Since the school provided training for high school students in 2019, it has become one of the local schools with the highest graduation rate in Hoa Ben Province. We have qualified teachers and innovative teaching methods. Now we're focusing on developing life skills for students in addition to their main subjects. Thanks to government support, poor children could overcome difficulties and get good grades. Many high school students pass the national high school exam. The school has modern facilities such as spacious classrooms and complete equipment. We are provided with textbooks, notebooks, and school supplies. Thanks to teachers' support, we have a good learning environment. The school has dormitory facilities where students can live or board during the school year. The teaching staff take care of their students at mealtimes and bedtime every day. The school also prioritizes mental health and supports students' emotional well-being as it impacts their academic success. When they first came here, sixth grade students always felt homesick and many of them cried a lot. The school staff and teachers provided students with the tools and support they need, helping them overcome this challenge and thrive in a new environment. 
chính sách của Đảng và Nhà nước. Ethnic students at boarding schools are eligible for the government's preferential policies, which are clarified in the Interministerial Circular No. 109 of the Ministry of Finance and the Ministry of Education and Training. Thanks to huge support from the government, local authorities, charity organizations, and benefactors, the school now has qualified classrooms and modern teaching equipment. The supportive environment has offered opportunities for ethnic children to grow and pursue their studies for a better future. Once an isolated island that was underdeveloped, Phu Quoc is on its way to become an engine for Vietnam's tourism sector and a leading luxury tourist destination in Southeast Asia. The tourist paradise has attracted huge investments from local and foreign investors. As authorities aim for sustainable tourism development in the locality, they have mapped out plans to improve hospitality, services, human resources and urban management. Known as Pearl Paradise, Phu Quoc boasts 22 islands and a number of breathtaking beaches. However, the number of foreign visitors to Phu Quoc Island in 2023 was below the number of visitors to Phuket, Thailand, and Bali, Indonesia. Visitors to Phu Quoc Island are exempt from visas for up to 30 days. We proposed a plan to the government, asking if we could extend visa-free entry to 90 days or even 180 days, as it will allow foreign tourists to prolong their stay. In June 2022, the Prime Minister approved the general planning project of Phu Quoc City until 2040. Since then, local authorities have implemented numerous strategies to develop the city sustainably. Local authorities have implemented plans to turn the island into one of the world's best luxury eco-tourism hubs. Many projects have been implemented to attract large investors, such as expanding the local airport terminal and cruise terminal. In addition, authorities have used incentives mechanisms to attract strategic investors. Tourism by far is at the forefront of the economic sector of Phu Quoc thanks to its stunning beaches, unspoiled jungles, and growing infrastructure for luxury tourism. Han Tom Island is to become a globally recognized high-end tourist destination. To boost the island's tourism development, Kien Zhang authorities are going to propose a plan asking for the government to establish specific policies and mechanisms for this locality. Coming up next in our world news, U.S. outlines priorities to reopen Baltimore port. And damage costs estimated to 110 million US dollars in Moscow concert attack. U.S. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg on a Wednesday outlined immediate and long-term priorities the Biden administration is pursuing in the aftermath of the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapse in Baltimore. Meanwhile, U.S. Treasury Secretary, uh, Secretary Janet Yellen said a U.S. federal supply chain tax force would need to assess the Baltimore bridge collapse and port closure. According to Vice Admiral Peter Gaultier, the U.S. Coast Guard is also leading efforts to clear debris from the site to reopen operations at the busy port of Baltimore. Of the 4,700 containers on board of the Dali, 56 contain hazardous materials, but there is no threat to the public. U.S. Secretary of Transportation addressed the impact of the crash on the local economy, saying that some 8,000 jobs were directly associated with port activities. About $2 million US dollars in wages are at stake every day, he added. According to Russia's leading news agency, TASS insurance companies believed that damage costs from the terror attack at Crocus City Hall on the outskirts of Moscow was estimated to exceed 10 billion rubles or nearly 110 million US dollars. The total amount of the insurance payout for the damage has yet to be revealed as the investigation and resolution process is expected to take up to two years to complete. Russian authorities said that they had arrested 11 people, among them four suspects charged 
with acts of terrorism in connection with the deadly attack, was sent to pre-trial detention for two months pending trial. According to Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov, the investigation process is ongoing, so there is no conclusions yet. So far, at least 143 people were confirmed dead and 360 injured. The investigative committee said 84 bodies had been identified. Amphibian and reptile species are threatened by habitat loss and being caught from meat and the pet trait, while amphibians in particular are at risk from disease. Snakes, frogs and crocodiles were among the species that took center stage in a new exhibit opening at London Zoo in the British capital on Friday. The exhibit gave visitors a glimpse into some of the behind-the-scenes breeding and animal care areas. The Secret Life of Reptiles and Amphibians showcases the Zoological Society of London's conservation and research work at London Zoo, namely with endangered species. Our visitors will be able to see our population of critically endangered mountain chicken frogs. There are just 30 left in the wild and the fate of that species depends on populations that are held in, in zoos. Uh, they'll learn why we have our animals, uh, the, captive breed, the importance of captive breeding programs, the importance of the research that we do on the animals that are held within our care. There are 33 different species, many of whom are very threatened in the wild and our visitors can see them in really naturalistic looking habitats. What's been really exciting is in the last few months we've, uh, we're seeing eggs and uh, we've successfully bred the species for the first time here in uh, the secret life of amphibians and reptiles uh, at London Zoo. And uh, yeah, it's been uh, really satisfying because we can see that all the information that we have from the wild and uh, through research we're applying it with how we keep them with their temperatures and everything and that seems to be working out really well. The zoo features specially built habitats. The secret life of reptiles and amphibians building has been designed to meet the needs of each of its 33 species, with different climate control zones, and staff checking temperatures, water quality and humidity on a daily basis. Now let's take a look at the weather forecast. And that's it for this edition of VTV News. Thank you very much for watching. To rewatch our program, you can download VTV Go from App Store or Google Play or tune in our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash VTV4Go. See you again at 3 p.m. local time. Goodbye for now.